Uh, we're going to look at dot product, and we're going to strictly focus on the algebra behind the dot product. Um, there's a bit of theory to go with it, but we're going to look at a couple of the rules. If we have two vectors and we're finding dot product of vector u and v, assuming they're non like negative vectors, like in other words, what I mean by that, if this is vector v, and then vector u is the complete opposite of this thing, uh, if it equals zero, then these are perpendicular vectors. Okay. Uh, dot product of u dot v is the equivalent of v dot u. So you can interchange the two of them due to something called associative property in multiplication. Um, the dot product of u dot u, so the same vector within itself, uh, you just take the absolute magnitude of the vector, or the absolute value, and square that. Um, if you have a scalar times a vector, and that together is being the dot product of another vector, you can change the scalar to the other vector, again, because of associative property. And finally, if... A scalar is just a number. A scalar is just a value, yeah, because it doesn't have a direction. It'll just be a value of something like uh, increasing a magnitude two or three times, something like that. Um, U dot of two vectors within brackets is the same idea of your distributive property. You can make it U dot V and U dot W. Um, and again, you can interchange this. It could be also v dot u and w dot u due to our property up here above. I just didn't want to write it twice, okay? But most importantly, how do you calculate dot product? Okay, this is your dot product here. Uh, dot product of vector a dot b is equal to the magnitude of a times the magnitude of b times cos theta. And theta is the angle between the two vectors that are intersecting each other. So we have a, an example here. Here we are, example one. The absolute value or the magnitude of vector b times the magnitude of vector a. Okay, so if we're doing a dot b, we're looking at magnitude of a. Well, magnitude of a is 20, so 20 times 30. And luckily, they've given us the angle here, cos 40. Great. Well, this is going to be 600 multiplied by cos 40, uh, we'll bring up a little calculator here. B shell of vector. What's that? Oh, you're right. It's not just a scalar. Thank you for pointing that out. Where's my calculator? Here it is. Uh, 40 cos, great, times 600 is equal to 459.6. So 400. And 59.6. And again, dot product kind of has to deal with, um, I think it is magnitude of force applied to something. So you're actually going to get, you're not going to get a vector out of this. You're going to get a value. So just a specific number. Now, uh, obviously, uh, the reason the associative property works here, where I can kind of interchange the two of these. If I interchange the two of these, when we did this question, it would just be 30 times 20. And we know that 30 times 20 or 20 times 30 still gives you the exact same value. That's kind of how that one works there. Um, that's a really quick example. These are your major rules when working with the algebra of dot product. But here's a very quick example of how to, to calculate one. Okay? To do a little proof here of some of the other ideas. Uh, things that are perpendicular. Okay. Um, why is this equal to zero? Well, something that's perpendicular has an angle between them of 90 degrees. So if we were to work with cos 90, whoops, sorry, that's actually what it results in. Cos 90 is zero, right? And zero times any value is going to be zero. So that's why we would know if we were to calculate it uh, when it comes down to zero, we know that these vectors are, are 90 degrees. And now obviously the way we calculated it, um, we knew that the angle between them was 90, but you may get a question where you know, they, they've given you the joules, the measurement here, and you're going to calculate, and you discover that the joules is zero, therefore it's at perpendicular angles. Um, another concept here is the um, values between these. So u dot u is actually the magnitude squared. Well, we know that u and u is the same value, so let's say u is a measure of 10. So it would be 10 times 10. The angle between a vector and itself would be zero, so cos zero, good, is the value of one. So it's 10 times 10 times one. Well, that's the equivalent of 10 squared in this case. Okay, um, that's pretty much all of them. This one here is an associative property. It's the same idea from within.